Hey, this is Philip with Go Web Examples. In the last video, we set up the Postgres database with Docker and ran our migrations against it using the Migrate CLI tool. In this video, we will implement our database layer based on the store interfaces we've created earlier in this series and use the SQLX package to help us fill our entity structs more easily. Let's start by creating a new directory and therefore a package, which we will call Postgres. This package will contain the implementations for the thread store, the post store and the comment store. I would like to mention, we could have also simply named the package db or store, but in the Go ecosystem, it is very encouraged to give a package a descriptive name. So someone who would just look at your directory structure could identify that this package has something to do with the Postgres database. This naming convention is also very useful if we were to write the same implementation for another database engine like MySQL or even something like Amazon's DynamoDB. With that said, let's create a new file for our thread store and declare its package name Postgres. As mentioned earlier, we will use the SQLX package to support us with our database access and querying. SQLX is a very thin and simple wrapper for Go's database SQL package. Its main feature is to stuff the results of a database query right into our entity structs, which you can see here with the db.get for a single entity or here with the db.select for a list of entities. So instead of having to loop through every database row returned, it will simply fill out our slice for us. To make use of that package, let's open up our terminal and download it with go get github.com slash jmoiron slash sqlx. Okay, with that done, let's create a new thread store struct which embeds a reference to sqlx db. Embedding a type into our struct is simply done by omitting the field name we would usually write in front of the type. This means our thread store struct borrows all of the functionalities and methods of the sqlx db type. So we can call any method right on our thread store. For example, the get and select methods we've seen earlier. Next, we'll create a function called new thread store, which simply initializes our thread store and returns it. Now to the juicy part where we implement the CRUD methods of our thread store interface from the go reddit package. VS Code has a neat feature for generating the method stubs. So if we open the quick actions menu by pressing Ctrl Shift P and search for generate interface stubs, we can specify the interface we want to implement. Here we type in the variable name for our receiver, in our case S for store, then an asterisk and the type thread store. And next, the interface we are implementing go reddit.threadstore. Hit enter and save the file to get the necessary imports. We can see VS Code created all interface methods for us. If you are seeing this type of method declaration for the first time, let me quickly explain it to you. All of these methods are just like any other functions but with a simple difference. In front of the method name, we can specify the type we want this method to attach to. This is called a receiver function. So on any instance of our type, in our case a thread store, we can call these methods. Basically, this is just syntactic sugar for making the struct the first parameter of our method. Okay, let's start by implementing our first method, the thread method. To give you a quick recap, the thread method should query a single thread entity from our database based on its ID. We create a new empty thread variable for our query results and call the get method on our store. The first parameter is a reference to our thread, so SQLX can automatically fill in the fields returned by our query. The second parameter is the SQL query, so we select everything from the threads table where the ID equals to our requested ID and pass in the ID variable as the third parameter. When this query is run, Postgres will pass the query and fill in the $1 placeholder 
with the value of our ID. This is called a prepared statement and is therefore resilient against SQL injections. The get method returns an error if something went wrong, so let's catch that and wrap it inside an if condition. We compare if error is not nil, meaning that an error occurred, and return a new empty thread along with the error to the caller. Based on the error, we can give it some context where the error occurred using the thumbed error f function and use the percent %w placeholder, which is a special placeholder for wrapping errors. So any caller could potentially unwrap the returned error to get the underlying database error. If everything was okay, we can return our thread t and nil for no error. Next, we implement the threads method where we query all of our threads from the database. Again, create an empty slice of threads. And just like the get method for the single entity, here we use the s.select method to query a list of them. So we simply select everything from the thread table. Let's also catch the error if any occurred and return it just like we did before. If no error occurred, we can simply return our slice of threads and nil for no error. The next method is for saving a thread to our database. For this, we will use the s.get method like we used when retrieving a single thread. At first, this might look unusual since an insert into query would not return any result. But with the returning asterisk statement, we can instruct Postgres to read us back the values it just inserted which we can then path through to our thread variable. This might be especially useful if we have auto-computed table columns like created at or updated at. For the three placeholders, we pass in our thread fields ID, title and description and catch the error again. For the update thread method, we can simply copy the code from before and modify it to update the fields. We also put in a WHERE clause to determine which thread it should update. Now to the last method, which deletes a thread. We can simply use the s.exec method to run our delete query. Note here, the exec method returns two results. The first one being the SQL result, which contains information about the affected rows and the last inserted ID, and an error as the second result. Because we can ignore the SQL result, we can omit the value by assigning it to an underscore, which is a reserved placeholder variable in Go. Alright, this is all there is for the thread store. Writing all of this code might look like a lot of boilerplate which we have to write, especially because we have to create these stores again for our posts and comments. But let me tell you, once this is all done, we've created a general abstraction for our database, which is very easy to use throughout our application, you know how everything works under the hood, and it still stays in a type safe way which we might not have if we were using an ORM package. The next two store implementations for the posts and comments look a lot like the one we've just made. So let me speed up the next section where I implement the rest and catch you back once I'm done with it, so we can glue them together. We create a new poststore.go file, declare our post store type, and write an initializer for it. Then we generate the interface stubs again and implement all the methods just like we did before.
Now to the comment store. We create a comment store.go file. Declare our comment store type again. Write an initializer. Generate the interface stubs. And implement all methods. So far so good. The last missing piece to complete our database layer is to actually connect it to our database service and glue the individual stores together. Let's hop into our goreddit.go file again and define a new store interface. The store interface is nothing more than just a wrapper for our thread store, our post store and our comment store. This will help us later when we want to pass our database stores to our application server using dependency injection. Ok, in our Postgres package, let's create a new store.go file, which will resemble our store interface. We declare the package name Postgres and create a new type store. Just like the store interface, the store struct will embed the thread store interface, the post store interface and the comment store interface. Let's create a new function to initialize our store and make it establish the connection to our Postgres database. We create a new function called new store, which takes a data source name as its parameter and returns a reference to a store and an error. In here, we open the database with sqlx.open, pass in the database driver name, which is Postgres, and the data source name, which is the connection string just like the one we used with the migrate tool. The open function returns a DB and an error. So let's check for the error and return if any occurred. Next, we ping the database, which establishes the first connection and checks if everything is working. This also returns an error we have to check for. And if everything went fine, we can finally create a new store by creating a new thread store, post store and comment store and pass in the DB variable to each of them. Although we've specified SQLX to use the Postgres driver, neither Go nor SQLX knows what Postgres actually is. So to make Go speak the language of the actual Postgres database, we have to download a driver which is there for encoding and decoding messages between Go and the database. The driver we will be using is the most popular one for the Postgres database and is very stable and well tested. We can download it with go get github.com slash lib slash pq. And lastly, import it as a side effect by writing underscore github.com slash lib slash pq. Alright, our database layer is now finally done and ready for use so we can easily manage our data.